Good evening and welcome to Girlfriend Minute. I am Char. And I'm Pascal. How are you, Pascal? Good. How are you? I'm good. A little tired, but I'm good. Uh, same here. Yeah. Otherwise, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I've been considering it's 1149 at night, but hey, we're, we're okay. a little ahead of schedule, aren't we? <laughs> we are ahead of schedule this evening, yes. You I know. think we're both exhausted. That's why we need to be ahead of schedule today. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. I've been, uh, yeah, I, you know, as, as, as we were talking, you know, I was trying to stay awake for a little bit. So, <laughs> yeah, struggles sometimes real. So, yeah, but, you know, nothing too eventful today around here. Ran mm -hmm. one errand, did some cleaning, you know, very exciting Saturday stuff. <laughs> oh, of course, you know, catching up on things you can't do during the week. So, yeah, extremely exciting stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like. Same old Saturday, different week, different yeah. month, different year. Yeah. So, well, not yeah. always, but, you know, it's my tip, which is okay. I'm not complaining because I do yeah, like being yeah. at home and just kind of in the peace and quiet and by myself and kind of just doing whatever needs to be done. It doesn't really bother me. Well, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, you talk on the phone all day long or you talk to people. You have uh, people that come in and out all the day. All to, uh, I'm sorry, all the time. You have people yeah. coming in and out, so it's kind of difficult to but continue that at home, too, as well. Excuse me. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, you need your time, your quiet time. And, um, yeah, and my weekends are it. So, yeah, I enjoy my quiet time. So that's about it. Very uneventful, except for going to the Largo feed to get dog food. Hey. Well, dogs need to eat. So. <laughs> they do. I don't want them to be angry at me. They would just gang up. It's not good. No, <laughs> not good. They would join forces. <laughs> oh, puppies. Even though they're not puppies, but they're still puppies. They're my puppies. Absolutely. I, I always call them puppy every day. Yes. Yeah, I'm like, you could puppy. And they're looking at me like, okay. <laughs> Why is Mom, crazy? listen, I'm old now, okay? I'm not a puppy anymore. <laughs> they're just trying to figure out why I'm always talking to them. <laughs> We're trying to nap over here. We're going to need you to stop. <laughs> it makes me wonder sometimes what they think when we're talking to them. Like, what are they really saying? What are they really thinking? <laughs> One looks at the other going, do you know what she means? I don't Right. Know. Exactly. <laughs> they have their own little secret language. They do. I am going to have to run to the store in the morning. I haven't made it to Costco, and I am out of bacon. <laughs> oh, no. We need the bacon. Definitely. And they know. <laughs> yes, they do. They're like, um... So I don't smell it anywhere in the house. Uh -oh. <laughs> I open the refrigerator. They're very nosy. So they know. <laughs> yeah, they know. Well, they're used to it every Sunday. So yeah, they when are. you're used to something, you know, you're I'm expecting it. Too. Yeah, you're expecting it. I love bacon. I'm not going to lie. Bacon I, is I mean, how can you not? <laughs> I know. People are always like, how much bacon do you give them? I'm, I don't give them a lot. <laughs> no, Each you give them the whole thing. out to yeah. the size of the dog <laughs> yeah. and how many dogs. So, right. yeah, so, you know, they don't get a lot. No, and they only get it once a week. It's not like you're forcing fat down their throat every single day. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here with that. I mean, apparently it didn't affect my labs because I had my labs last Monday and mm -hmm. I go to Baycare Lab and they don't play around with labs. All my results come in with like two hours. Oh, wow. So, yeah, um, all of them. And so, and I know how to basically read them. So, well, good, perfect. <laughs> I'm logging in <laughs> during work, yeah. multitasking. I'm like, okay, what was that one? Okay, it went down from last time and so many. <laughs> Yeah, well, you got to keep up with that stuff. I do the same thing. And then Monday, I go see my doctor, my primary care for my yearly for him to go over the labs with me. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Just here to say, hey. <laughs> right. Oh, it's okay, doctor. We, I've already gone through that. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I don't need you. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on in your life? <laughs> How goes it, Dr. Light? <laughs> Anything new and exciting? Yeah. <laughs> he would just look at me like, "What?" <laughs> I know, right? He's well, learning. Man. He's learning me, so he's still learning me. <laughs> well, good. He's, they're supposed to, you know, keep up with you. So, yeah. but still, nowadays, anyway, doctors don't even really take their time. So that's he that. spends an hour with me every year. That's good. Yeah. Rightfully so, he should. Whether I need it or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, 
he gets paid for it, so he might as well do it. Yeah, no, he does. He does. You know, he's he's funny. He's funny because you know Baker. Everyone has an Apple phone. Yeah. And um, he'll be like, "Hold on, I have to, I have to respond to this text," and he'll respond. And then he'll he'll drop the f bomb if they would just f and read my instructions. <laughs> they wouldn't have to text me. Yeah. <laughs> As he rounds at the hospital twice a day, so. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you know. Well, they be... skim through it. They probably just get the, the you know the, I guess the letters that are the whatever word pops out at them at the time, and then they're like, mm-hmm. okay, we're just gonna call him. Yeah, <laughs> they do. We don't care. We don't care what office visits about. too, so you you got to read a little bit. <laughs> I get that hour every year. Give it to me. Leave me alone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Leave him so, alone. Leave me alone. So that's about it. Yeah. And you? Um. So I am babysitting children. Um. My daughter's children this weekend. So. I had to, you know, situate the restaurant to make sure that people are there. Otherwise, I mean, I just would have shut it down. So yeah. wouldn't have mattered. But uh, everything, everything was okay, and the babies are doing good. And um, my daughter went to um, a wedding, and so she was excited to do that. And I didn't want to disappoint her, so I told her, "No problem. I'll get everything settled, and that's it. And that's where I've been. I'll be here until tomorrow." And uh, they'll come back tomorrow, and then I will head home. Well, it's uh, it's much needed for her as well, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. It's hard, you know, when you're taking care of kids day in and day out. Um, but especially when you have one that is um, disabled. So. Yeah. 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 But yeah. So, what uh, what questions do we have for this week? Uh, I was just we were going to talk about boundaries. Um, and you know, what types of boundaries there are and who sets boundaries and who doesn't and what do you, um, what are your boundaries? Basically, I did ask, um, the question on Facebook. So boundaries are just basically, it's just saying I'm okay with this and I'm not okay with that. And so I know that's something that is an issue for me. I do a lot of things that I may not truly want to do with people or for people. (laughs) And that's not, and and I don't mean it to come across like I don't want to do anything for anyone, but I uh, try to keep everyone happy and keep the peace. I uh, let people do kind of what they really want to do. Yeah. Um, Yeah, we all have to have some kind of boundaries. Um, no matter what it is. Um, It could be things that could involve like your thoughts and feelings. Um, It could be your possessions or your money. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be your time, your energy, Mm -hmm. um, and your physical space and your body. And even, you know, like as married people, even your sexuality with that too um, could be a space Mm -hmm. um, and boundaries that you would need that um but we have to make sure that we have a balance between healthy and uh, unhealthy um boundaries because sometimes if we don't do that then we just let people uh, like you said do whatever they want or walk all over you if um if you don't set those boundaries or or those limits and uh you almost have to sit down with yourself to actually recognize what are those boundaries for yourself before you can actually have relationships with other people. Yeah. And um, and then you have to recognize the, the boundaries that you have, um, whether they work for you or whether they don't work for you, and whether they work for the people who you are in relationships with, um, whether it being your family members, your co-workers, your neighbors, um, friends, um, your loved ones, like if you're married or not married, boyfriend, girlfriend, partners, things like that. And then just people in society. Yeah. 
So, and each each person reacts to a boundary in a different way. So do. we we do have to set them. Yeah. So what are your struggles with boundaries? Um, I think I'm kind of a little bit like you on that sense, where I I try to keep the peace. I like every buddy to be at peace. I don't like drama. I don't like to have a lot of things going on. I just want people to be happy. So if it means that they want something from me and that makes them happy, even though it doesn't make me happy, I kind of just say, okay. Yeah. You know, and then later I keep thinking about it and thinking about it and I'm like, oh my God, should I have done that? Shouldn't I have done that? I usually get mad at myself when I give in, even though I I tell myself I'm not going to, and I do it. Yeah. Then I'm, I'm angry at myself for doing it. Yeah, and that makes sense. Yeah, you know, when I start thinking about it too much, you know, because um, it's not reciprocated, and that's why you need boundaries. Yes. You know, so when it's, you know, when it's time and time again and not reciprocated, I get angry because it's like you're not, you're not reciprocating in any way. I, you know, I'm willing to do this or do that for you. I've have, I've dropped what I was doing to accommodate others, and none of it's ever been reciprocated. Right, exactly. And and so the last few years, and literally just the last few years, I've gotten better about saying no to even family members. Yeah, that's very important because you have to take care of yourself too as well. I mean, you can't do everything for everybody all the time. No, no. It's very difficult, you know. And that's the thing too is I sit back and look, I don't ask people to do this for me. You know what I'm saying? It's like I don't yeah do my my stuff myself you do your own thing yeah exactly you know, and I don't expect anyone and nor would I ever consider asking anyone to so mm-hmm. um saying no especially to your children your super close family members you know sure. has been a, the biggest challenge for me and I have I have learned to do that even with the grandbaby you know I get a text and it's like you know, what are you doing Saturday? And some Saturdays, every four to five Saturdays, I have two appointments and they're self-care appointments. And, um, I'm like, I have appointments. Yeah. Well, you got to take care of yourself. The old me would have canceled those appointments and rescheduled them. Well, there you go. To accommodate. So I'm getting really good at being like, no, I'm going to do me today. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, cause, and rightfully you know, so. That's a healthy boundary. We mm-hmm. all have to learn to adjust and accommodate. And um, sometimes when you don't have the help you want, you have to figure it out on your own from there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know? So and it's, it's hard because then there's always the guilt afterwards. Yes, As I'm driving too I, do that, I feel that too sometimes. <laughs> I feel I that too. Yeah. I feel guilty. It's like, you know world won't end if I, you know, but it's like, no, no, all my, these appointments are planned. And they're already one, set. Yeah. Or I'm, I'm planned a year out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I have a printout, you know, so, and the other one I plan a month in advance. So, you know, and these happen to fall on the same weekend. So yeah, I'm getting better about it. You know. Yeah. Well, that's and, good. I mean, that, that also will show the other person a sense of, you know, it's respect as well. You know, like you set your boundaries, you don't get manipulated by those other people who are trying to do that. Um, not to say that your daughter was doing that. I'm not saying no, that. No, but, no, 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 I know. Um, just in general. But in general, that, yes, people, some do. Yes. Yeah. And people, some do. And then um, and sometimes, like you said, it can be difficult. Like like I'm like you in that way. Again, I feel guilty afterward after I said no. Yeah. Like, you know, and then and then my problem is, too, is I try to find a way to reschedule everything, like change things around. Yes. So that I can be there for that person or whoever it may be. Well, like in the past, when I talked about, you know, my trip to New York City and my ex best friend, like, you know, we want to come over for and spend some time with you in New York city, can you rearrange your schedule? And what do I do? Even though my good friend Ellen's like, don't rearrange your schedule. Well, I rearranged it. Cause she would be mad. Yeah. You know, And, um, 
had I known that she was going to be mad at me for a meme, I would have not rearranged it back then, just been done with it at that point in time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> Might not have a crystal ball, so. <laughs> oh, of course you can't. You can't predict the future. So. so there are seven types of boundaries. Okay. There's your time boundary where you set time limits, like I'm only going to go to this person's house for 30 minutes. Okay. You know, you're accommodating to a certain point, but then you're like, I'm, I'm done and I'm going to go now. And, you know, so you said it could be an hour, it could be 30 minutes, just depending on what it is and mm -hmm. what you want to set for yourself. There's the mental mm -hmm. freedom to have your own thoughts, values, and opinions. Um, that's not always the case for me here. <laughs> yeah. There's emotional. How emotionally available are you to others? And is that ever reciprocated? Um, there's the physical. And you kind of touched on some of that too. Um, your personal space, your body. Mm -hmm. You know, some people don't like to be hugged or touched or whatnot. And yeah. so, you know, there's that. Um, there's conversational topics that you do not feel comfortable discussing with just everybody right. and anybody. Um, there's the internal, the self-regulation of energy extended on self versus others, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's the material, monetary decisions, giving or lending people money, especially mm -hmm. those who don't pay you back. <laughs> yeah. So, which those is are, kind of interesting. Those are really good boundaries because I think we all at one point have come across just about everyone that you mentioned oh yeah at one point in time yeah we have um usually it's family usually well because you spend most of your time with them so yeah, yeah most most of the time you spend is with your family unless you are you know, just kind of coming in and out, in and out, in and out, like going to work for eight hours, you come home for like half an hour and then you're out and you leave and you go with your friends or whomever that you talk to. But most, most of everybody and most of our lives are spent with our families. Yeah. So, so do you set boundaries? Um, Have you learned to? Well, I'm still in the process of learning too. I can't yeah. say that I have set complete in 100% boundaries and I don't think that even exists but um I'm, I'm you know slowly I'm trying to I'm yeah. trying to it is work. like like the the thing that I've realized is where I used to push myself to to even when I'm tired and exhausted and whatever and I would just push myself to go and do something for somebody else um it's great at the time but then I get so tired but now that I learn to say no that I can't do that because I'm tired I need to go to sleep or I need to go and get myself winded down for the evening or what have you or I need to do whatever I want for myself so yeah that in that case I've, I've I'm learning I'm learning <laughs> It's, it's hard. I think a lot of women struggle with that. There, and then I've met plenty of others who just like, just say no. Right. Don't because some people, it's easy for them to say no. They're like right away. Yeah. No. I'm yeah. getting better at saying no. Yeah. I'm also, one thing I've noticed too, is I don't feel as guilty. I have some guilt, but I'm not feeling as guilty. As you did in the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. 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 It's gotten better. Yeah. It gets better, my dear. <laughs> okay, well, something to look <laughs> forward to. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know. Well, what do you do in the case when somebody may overstep a boundary? I guess that depends what? on who it is and, and what they overstepped. If, yeah. if it's a family member and it's a family issue and there's a lot of drama going on, I generally do not. Uh, when I add to the drama or the stress of the situation, if it's stressful or whatever's going on, I generally try to stay more in the background on it. Um, if it's a friend and I don't really want to, and usually the, it's a, through the cell phone texting, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'll either say, you know, no, thank you, but I thank you for thinking of me. 
you know, and then sometimes I have plans or possible plans. And I'm just kind of waiting to see if they follow through and whatnot. But I, I'm getting better about saying, you know, no to some things. I also have learned something about myself is that if I say no too much, I will end up just staying home all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because I truly do enjoy my peace and quiet and alone time. And Saturday and Sunday is pretty much that day. Those days for me. That's that's when that happens for me because I do talk to people all week. Yeah. And we've had a few crazy busy weeks and we've had some people that I don't want to say crazy but are just over the top and uh, I had some guy who was mad at me the other day. There was nothing I could do for him for what he was trying to do. And he's like, you know what? I'm just trying to help my friend get fixed because so she can have a life. You know, I said, I understand that, but these are the steps. These are the things I need. And, 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 you know, I can't do anything without any of that information of what sure. we're doing. Uh, he's, you, you know what? Just, just forget it. I hope you have a lousy day. I said, Oh, thank you. You too. And I hung up. <laughs> I, it just fell right out of my mouth. <laughs> Okay, well, see, that that's a I, boundary. I that's a think, work boundary. You know, I didn't think, I didn't, nothing, you know, it's, it was on the phone and, you know, he's trying to help someone that I had been dealing with for two weeks and uh, she has some issues. So she's having a hard time understanding the process. Okay. She has some medical issues. So uh, she's sweet as pie, but, you know, she has these medical issues and that, that so she needed someone to help communicate yeah. and orchestrate, coordinate and help her, you know, follow the process. Cause she can't do it on her own. And, um, but he was just, I mean, he's not as awful as some, but you know, he, he basically, you know, just wants to come in and get a cat scan of her neck <laughs> without a doctor saying she needs it or anything. So I'm like, okay. Oh yeah. Well, no, yeah. You can't yeah, do that. That doesn't work that way. You just no, sit you can't and be like, work. I feel like being scanned today. Let's, you know, right? you don't a donut or a tube. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be shoved in the donut or the tube or put on yeah. the table and go through a donut, you know, <laughs> what's you your pickings? So, yeah. So, you know, um, it's just been a crazy few weeks. And then, of course, things going on at work that are changing and they're bringing people by and introducing us. And I'm just like, mm -mm, something's, oh, man. That's something's up. You should so. put a sign on your, on your desk. I have boundaries today. Please don't cross them. <laughs> <laughs> going to need you to leave. <laughs> I'm going to need you not to say hello to me today. So keep on walking past my desk. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's, it's come back it's, another time, make an appointment, you know, <laughs> right? And then there's the work, the work boundaries with the coworkers who mm -hmm. don't necessarily respect the fact there's a certain amount of us down in a small area. Sure. And it's it's not a lot of privacy, so it's hard to be HIPAA compliant and and just be quiet, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and there's always a lot going on. The patients come back with us, and so. Um, you know, I've, you know, I have the one that's got a strong personality at work. <laughs> yes. You know, and she's always like, what's the matter? I'm like, I'm working. <laughs> right. Which is what you should be doing. <laughs> which is what you should be doing. Oh, it's pretty bad when uh, management's like, we're going to start separating those two more because they have too much free time <laughs> yeah oh so you are watching the camera so it's good to know I mean not that I, I'm always where I'm supposed to be but right you know it's good to know that you know you're, you're if somebody's it, you looking know. out yeah someone's looking out because we get tired of the boundaries being crossed all the time so yeah well and that's what I mean there's no yeah exactly no respect there no like respect. no respect for other people around you that are working no. Because you guys are on the phone, so you're talking to, to customers or clients or whomever, or doctors or whomever you need to, to talk to. So can you imagine listening in on that and hearing all that in the background? That's a bit, that's too much. Well, um, I have a mixture of both. That's kind of why I like 
my position. I'm not just on the phone because I can't do just phones. And actually, I break my phone quite a bit. And it's because I do a lot of outside orders for Florida Cancer and Florida ENT and stuff. And some mornings I pull off, I don't know, 10 to 15 orders. And I have to input them into the, you know, and sometimes they're new patients. So I have to create the chart. and Everything's, you know, electronic now. And then sure, I have to put everything in there. And um, when you get that many, it's very time consuming. <laughs> you know, it takes me all morning to do it all and then call and get the patient schedules and stuff. So I, I, um, I get a lot of walk backs. I get a lot that walk into my little cubicle. Oh, okay. Um, my coworker, my one coworker is on the phone a lot, a lot, a lot. She spends most of her day doing that. Whereas the other two of us spend most of our day interacting mostly with the people in person in the computer, mm-hmm. in the cubicle. So, um, and you know, some of them are a little inappropriate and I'm just like, we don't discuss that here. And they just kind of go, Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's another boundary. Like there's, you know, you don't talk about that stuff in a workplace. Like that's yeah. something you should do outside of the workplace. Yeah. You want to hang out, you want to call me on the phone. Okay. No problem. We can discuss some of that. Um, and I know, you know, we spend the majority of our day with our coworkers. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very difficult to kind of separate things sometimes, but however, you have to have that respect and you have to have that inside your brain, I guess, or that instilled within you from, you know, the time you were young. And it's like, you know, you have to respect the other person's space. And if you don't, it's, it makes work very difficult. I used to work in Medicare and we used to have cubicles Mm -hmm. and um so some of the people have like you know little tiny radios or or whatever um at their station and they would play it i mean some of them wouldn't be played loud but mind you the cubicles they're not walls they're not actual walls walls. (laughs) yeah so i could still hear you right (laughs) I do. I will. I will open up like Pandora on my one computer mm-hmm. when certain people are being a, do, a bit too much. Yeah. And uh, and I will listen to music quietly while I type away just to drown out some of the the noise. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> you know, and that because that... when I do answer the phone, I have one next to me who's talking, and she gets a little loud, and then I have the one across from me. <laughs> And then there's the one behind her. <laughs> it's just, you it gets all to around be, you. I got them all around me. And then times I can't, you know, I can't hear because some of them are so loud. And, yeah. And um, you can't concentrate to do your own work. And I had a patient the other day. She was trying to uh, convert me to be a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, okay. And so did that you was convert? a little uncomfortable. <laughs> no, I did not convert. <laughs> but thank you for asking. No, I did not oh. convert. <laughs> It it was uncomfortable because I tell them generally when they start giving me political pamphlets or Jehovah Witness business cards or whatever you call them, yeah, uh, that I, I give it back to them. I say, you know, this is medical and that's that's personal, and we don't we can't do that here. I'm not allowed. Right, to do I that can't here. accept it. I can't. I can't take- accept it. You know, and um, and I I actually don't have a problem doing that. But she was so sweet. <laughs> She's passing me the card with the QR scan code on it. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's, oh, they have a scan code nowadays? They they do, apparently. Oh, my gosh. So when she left, I took it across to my one coworker that has to learn some of the boundaries. And I'm like, you need this. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked out. Oh, my God. That's and she's like, no. No, I don't <laughs> You need, need it. Me. I'm like, no, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, but yeah. that it, it makes it very difficult for you to concentrate, especially when there's people just constantly going all day. I don't even know how they get their work done, to be honest. Because when when it was in the cubicles, um, some of the people around me used to have people coming to their cubicle and hanging out and sitting at the edge of the desk and talking, talking, talking. And then that would disturb me because I'll be like, 
I can't do my work. So then I'll put my headphones on and usually um, we had these little CDs that were like books or what have you. So I would just kind of listen to that and have my headphones in so that I didn't hear anybody else around me. So we were allowed to do that. Um, I wasn't on the phone, so I didn't have to sit there or talk on the phone or answer the phone. It was just basically inserting the stuff into the computer. So yeah, yeah. Or fixing, it's... fixing. Uh, uh, what do you call those? Fixing um, diagnosis. Fixing oh, diagnosis. Fixing the diagnosis stuff. codes, the billable codes. Yeah. Yes, the billable codes. Yeah. yeah, those are fun. Oh yay! Well, I I don't fix them. But I send messages to the doctors to fix them because I know what they need to be. Yes. And they're not correct. Yeah. <laughs> so when everything I do, when I know the code is wrong, I go ahead and take care of the patient. I bump it out a few more days. I use the correct codes. And then I send a message up to the doctors asking to change it to what I need it to be changed to. And they're usually pretty compliant and do. And then I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, Medicare would love you. Yeah. Medicare no. would love somebody like you because then you take care of the situation before it actually gets to our hands. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do take care of the situation to avoid the rigmarole that happens when everyone realizes it's not right. Well, if you're paying attention and you're reading, um, you know, yeah, you can get it right. You can That's get it funny. right. That's yeah. funny. It's funny that you mentioned that because it, if it comes by my desk, okay, let's let's say I played the role uh, on the other side of you, on the insurance side of you. So if it comes by my desk, then it becomes just something so simple as changing one little number. And then, of course, I can't give it away. They have to tell me what it is correct. because they're the ones that wrote it. They're the ones that so, wrote it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. You're not allowed to tell so, a doctor what to do or you're not allowed to. <laughs> no. So now I feel like I'm on the price is right. You know, know. <laughs> higher, lower, higher, <laughs> lower. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Ding, ding, uh, ding, ding. I need this not to be an R code. It needs to be a J44.9. Exactly. <laughs> can, can I get a J44.9? I'd appreciate exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. You know, it's just, it's funny. Um, it, it's funny. Life is funny. I, I Growing up, I was uh, used by my oldest sister a lot to be a built-in babysitter for her children. Mm -hmm. And uh, yet she never spent a day with my children when they were little. And uh, it was expected of me, you know. And I missed out on a lot of opportunities with friends and stuff because I, you know... Why? Because you were younger, it was expected. I was you? young. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I guess that's because I'm the oldest. So it's a little uh, bit different. It's, it's, yeah, it's different. I was babysitting age. I was babysitting <laughs> her kids. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I, I never, my mom would have been upset if I said no. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was more like I've had to change plans to accommodate family members. So no one ever changed plans for me. So I just kind of got tired of all that. Um, it's funny how we have to think twice mm -hmm. about something before we actually say no, where some people are just easy, like the no rolls off their tongue, like nothing. Like it's, Well, and, and, and yeah. that's not to be rude. It's because they've decided to set those boundaries and they're going to, and they're just, they're taking care of themselves. Yeah, that's right. That's true. That's very true. You know, uh, my biggest one with with everybody is is um, especially family is uh, my own thoughts, values, feelings, opinions. Yeah. You know. Definitely. Um, that was one thing I did is I actually put myself in therapy about four or five years ago because I was always made to feel like. <laughs> Uh, my thoughts, feelings, opinions didn't matter, and uh, things that were said, um, the person who said them was like, yeah, I don't remember saying that, I don't remember writing you that, and, and you know, and just making me feel like, I don't know, I was of no value. And yeah. that's how they make you feel. They make yeah. you feel like you're nothing. Like it's you can just be walked on like you're a mat. Yeah. Oh, well, just she'll be fine with it. Just go. She'll be good with it. You know, because why? Because they've done it to you so many times that they don't 
have that respect for you to say, oh, well, maybe she has, you know, those feelings. So, yeah. And uh, I was dismissed from therapy because they're like, you know who you are. So you need to learn to just say no to certain things. You're not crazy. You're not going insane. Uh, you know, um, they had me read a book. She's like, I recommend this book for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I did. And, um, <clears throat> And then there's a book out called, I forget what it's called, but basically about not giving a fuck is the title of it. It's, it's oh, got a bright orange yeah. cover and it's got these black letters and that's what it says on there. And, yeah. and, uh, and there's all kinds of books, but I've read a few and um, they're all interesting. And I, have like I said, the guilt feeling, feeling gets less and less. It yeah. Truly does. And you know what? I'm, I'm happier you know that's that's another thing um i was just gonna say uh, what are some what things have you found that are beneficial to you when you do set those boundaries and one of them is that you are happier that's good and that i am happier yeah i less uh, stress <laughs> uh it's less you know sometimes the depending well yeah in the beginning when i started saying i'm gonna say no i'm not gonna be emotionally manipulated to change my what I want to do or what I don't want to do. Um, and then I worried about consequences after too, if that makes sense, yeah. you know? And um, so it, it was, you know, and I don't think I don't go back and forth in my brain and be a little wishy-washy. I think that's normal. Yeah. I think that's normal. I mean, you can't, like I said, it's not a hundred percent perfect. And, and because we've already had those feelings, you and I, as far as trying to make others happy before we make ourselves happy, um, it's bound to creep in from way back where you're trying to put it and trying to leave it in your brain. So um, you don't want it to drain you because, um, you know, then you become unbalanced and, uh, you know, you have to value yourself. That's important. Yeah. You have to value yourself and know what you can and cannot do. That's it. Yeah. It's very simple. Well, it, it sounds difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds simple. It's Sometimes easier said than done. Correct. <laughs> you know, so you, it's, I'm getting better at declining things that I don't want to do. Yeah. And participate in. Um, and you always have to express your feelings in a responsible manner, you know. It, yeah, it can't I mean, be... you, you set your boundaries in a healthy way. You're not going to set them in an unhealthy way where you are using them in a, in a wrong sense. You're going to set them in a healthy way and, you know, communicate why you did this or why you had to do that. And that's it. And sometimes you don't even have to really explain yourself. You just have to set those boundaries, you know, early on, I think. I think it, because I haven't set boundaries with, you know, certain relationships early on. Um, I got made to feel guilty about things. Um, and like you said, it just goes through your mind all the time. Even after you said no, it just, you know, it's like, What's going on? Like, no, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Or here, let me see how I can try and fix it. So how do you stop some of that going through your mind, though? Because when I've, different situations that have come up over the years and and I replayed in my mind, because that's what we do. We replay things in our mind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you have the guilt. I also discovered I have some anger sometimes. Yeah. Um, because you feel like you're being taken advantage of and used. And if you say no, and depending on the person, they may have an issue with the fact that you said no and let you know that they have an issue with the fact that you said no. And um, and then it becomes a big mess. It can become a big mess. And yeah. so I try to talk myself into sticking more towards the anger side of the situation. Not that I'm being angry or nasty to anybody, but I'm using what makes me angry to stick to my guns for myself, if that makes sense. Yes. You know, you know I like, you know, no one checks on me daily. 
no, you know, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah, it's, it's, you know, a simple, hello, hi, how are you is nice every once in a while and stuff. Sure. So, yeah. um, I use, you know, I don't, I don't treat people that way. So, you know, I get a little angry about some of it sometimes. Well, that's because I think sometimes we get pressured into saying yes to some things. Um, and we have to remember that when we do say no, that no is a complete sentence. You don't have to explain or justify yourself. And I, you feel that though sometimes that you have to. You do. Yeah, you do feel like you have to justify yourself sometimes. I'll lay in bed thinking about it. I should have said this. Or I should have oh, said that. Oh my gosh. I should have. <laughs> I feel you. I Trust I me. I feel this, that. Yeah. You know, or told them that. Or, you know, it's just like, no, because when they tell me no or someone tells me no for something, they don't justify it. So why do I feel the need to justify myself to anyone? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. exactly. I'm a big girl. And then why does it replay in, in your head all the time? Why do like, we do that to ourselves? Well, I don't know. I, I think it's because we feel that guilt inside again. You know, there's the guilt thing again. So I think it's just something. I don't know where it stems from. I mean, I wish I had the answer to to say, hey, listen, yeah, I know exactly where that stems from. But I really don't know where that stems from. It's just some of us are that way and some of us are not. Is it just seeing our, our mothers over the years or is that like. I think it's our relationships growing up with different people Mm -hmm. um, through our experiences. Um, and some people, because each person has their own different personality, whether it be in, obviously in your family or whether it be outside of your family. So each person has their own, their own way or their own character, I should say. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one character might be more, have more self-esteem Uh, They might be more aware of their self-care than the other character, where the other character would be like, okay, um, a little more quieter, a little more reserved, um, where the character that has more self-esteem then will overpower that character, you know, and then that's just the way we go through our life. And then we get used to it all the time because they're dominating Because that's how their character is. And then we just become immune to it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I think. I mean, I, like, I'm not a therapist or anything like that. So I have no idea. I'm just saying from my experiences and from what I know, that's it. So in the past, I have said my mother the one thing that she did for me that was the best thing she ever did for me was get me out of that house with my father. Mm -hmm. And, uh, from there, one thing she didn't really do was parent me. We never had any real heart to hearts about what truly was always going on. And just, you know, if I asked a question, she would think about it for a minute because she'd want to word it delicately. Sure. Not even necessarily to hurt my feelings, but maybe more towards age, you know, age appropriate answer. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I was young and um, and stuff, but she never had any of those significant conversations with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the therapist told me once, your mother did teach you one thing. And that was her basically saying, you know, I didn't stand up for myself. I didn't set boundaries. Yeah. I let certain things happen. My mother always lets certain things happen because she's just trying to keep the peace. And if you're trying to keep him happy, you're trying to keep the peace, you know? And uh, the therapist said that was one thing I learned from my mother. Yeah. You know, yeah, we'll and it was kind of interesting to hear that, you know, if yeah. I hadn't thought of it that way, because I, it's, you know, when I talk about my family growing up, it's, he was an alcoholic and it was not a good time, <laughs> you, know? Oh, yeah. you know, and that ruled the world. You know, that was every day. That was, you know, well, you never yeah, knew that's what you not were an getting. Easy, so, yeah. and she couldn't say anything to him because he didn't allow it. So, to me, you never talked back to, you know, anyone. Well, 
Right, you know? exactly, exactly. But you always did what was expected of you. Yes, and that's it. And that's it. Right. So I've always done what's been expected of me. Yeah, so basically uh, it, it was boundaries. Yes, you had them, but they were not in a good way. And you did, you did that what was expected of you because that's a defense mechanism that you had to use, you know, while you were growing up at the time too. So, you know, and it, it can't be faulted because that's just how it was. What was happening. Yeah. That's just happening. what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so it's, it's interesting when you start looking back when you, you how know, it, how it started. Yeah, it started. is. You know, I wish I knew then when I know now that. Whole, yeah. Yeah. Got you sitting back going, man. <laughs> well, you know, communication is key too. like, like in order for you to even set boundaries or have those kinds of boundaries, you have to communicate with the other person, whoever that person may be, whether it's family or whether it's work people, you have to, you have to say things instead of like saying things, um, uh, that would like direct direct what you're trying to say to that person you have to more likely say you know like I don't feel like I should really be doing this maybe we should do something else yeah you know that's a boundary so I don't know it's it's it is very difficult um I know like I I've told you before like you know growing up Lebanese it was just you do what your family said that's it that's like you said What's yeah. expected? Yeah, that's you it. Do what's expected. You don't ask. You don't question. You don't ask. Correct. You just do it. You just that's do it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it's kind of hard. Uh, but there there are really like very um strong characters though in like maybe I don't know maybe like in a rebellious kind of way I guess you can say that. That they mean? would like go against like doing oh, what was well, expected would, of you. Family would call them rebellious because, yeah, especially I think would think in your culture. Yeah. Because you're saying no, I'm gonna go do this. Right. You know, she's yeah. being, she's in her rebellious phase. Right. Uh, no, she's saying no because she probably doesn't want to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. But they don't get it sometimes. You know. They're just, no. Yeah, it's okay. They don't see anything wrong with doing it their way. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's that's where the strong personalities come in play. Like yeah. some are more stronger than others. And I know my personality, it's not um, in that sense where I can't say no sometimes. Um, I'm not strong in that sense, by no means. Um, hopefully. I don't know. Maybe before I die, I'll be strong. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or even I, I think as I get older, I don't care as much anymore. That's funny I, because as I get older, I, I definitely do. Do you? I, I, I care, well, I care about me more. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. So you're saying you don't care about. I don't care what? about what anyone else is doing or say or think or do about it or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like I just so that's where I'm at. I care less about what their expectations of me are. Yeah. I know who I am. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um exactly, and they can whoever it is can think what they want to think. That's it. Yeah. Cuz so. I just don't have time for it. I don't want to I don't want to think about it. I think, I think to me, and that's, that's the thing for me. I think for me, it's like, it takes too much energy for me to think about it anymore. Yeah. And it's like, forget it. I just don't want to think about it. It's, it's a waste. It is a waste. Like I'm over it. Yeah. It's exhausting too. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, there was this thing on IG. I, I didn't um, get to send it to you, but it's very meaningful. And it was about, um, let me see if I could bring it up again. I had sent it to someone too as well. And it was about life. Okay. And it was about going through your life and what is meaningful. So 
she had said that in a hundred years, okay, we're all going to pass away, right? Correct. So all our homes and all our cars and all of the things that we have today will no longer matter. All the possessions will be given away or destroyed. And what we indulge in and um, what we think matters to us will just all be scrapped and all be gone, right? And who's going to really remember us? Maybe we might not be forgotten for maybe a couple years. Yeah. But then afterward, we end up being forgotten, you know? And then after a decade, after those hundred years or so, that's it. You're going to be gone. Nobody will remember you. All your stuff is gone. All the things that were important. You are gone. You're gone. That's Life it. goes on. Life goes on. And you on. are a memory to your family that was here at the time with you. And then, yeah. Yeah. And you're not a memory. Who's going to know you like three? Okay. So your daughter has kids. Her kids have kids and they may know of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then their kids then will have kids and then they won't know. They won't know you anymore. That's it. You're going to be the person in the picture. They're going to be going, who is this? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What year was this? (laughs) Yeah. So I did post it on, on Facebook, the question, um, what do you consider healthy bound boundaries? How do you set them and stick to them? Meaning not being made to feel guilty and caving in. Uh, Christy says it depends on the area of your life that you're thinking about. But in general, I need to be respected to stay well and to be allowed to be myself, fully myself. So anything that violates my ability to manage my own time, creativity, ethics, or overall wellness, those are the boundary lines for me. And... Uh, and those are good ones because those, those are, very are good healthy ones. boundaries. Yes. It's about taking care of yourself. And uh, and then. Well, you see, everything stems around you. Yeah, well, and, and, you know, oh. and, and Danny says it all depends on the situation. I will say as you get older, setting boundaries does get easier as you learn to care less what others think. And you tend to find it easier to be yourself and protect your boundaries and decisions in life. And then yeah. my. Yeah, basically the same. Laura says, I think you just have to do whatever it is that you know you need to do for you without offering any explanation or justification to those who feel the need to question it. My problem is explaining myself to others too much. I have that same problem. I feel like I do have to explain. Yes, same. Decision. I, you know, I do. I can't problem. help it. I don't know what that need is part of the guilt probably you know oh yeah I'm in the same boat with that like you know and then Melody said for me as I've gotten older I've learned to listen to my heart mind and gut a little bit more I used to always help others everywhere and spread myself way too thin worrying about if I couldn't help someone out with whatever or worrying about if I had upset them or their feelings towards me with my husband's help in in reference to don't worry about what others think or feel towards you I finally have learned to start listening to me. I try to help when I, when and where I can as long as I am able to do so. That's why I try not to make promises that I can't keep. Nowadays, I usually comment if I'm able to, I usually comment if I'm able to help, I will, or something along those lines. I have also noticed that if I start feeling used or too much of me is being expected to do something or be somewhere, I just stop showing up or stop communicating. Granted, that's not the ideal way to handle that situation. Um, it should be vocalized to whomever uh, what is being felt by me, she wrote. Some people just have a way of making me pressured into feeling, doing things. So that's why I just walk away without saying anything. It's almost like self-preservation. And to me, that was key. It is kind of a self-preservation. Oh, it um, is. Definitely. You know, you hear these you see all this stuff on Facebook, people post and repost and do you, you know, and, and all this stuff, but it's true. You do have to do some of you or you lose yourself. I know I lost myself because I was too busy taking care of everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, well, this is what it's about. Right. Because that's, that, that was your dynamics. That was the dynamics. 
Yeah. And that was says, the dynamics. That was the dynamics. Well, I mean, we've we've touched on a lot of uh, what um, our listeners and our respondents have said um, as far as uh, boundaries goes. Um, and we all come to one figure and it's that figure is I. I, I, I. Sometimes, yes, it can be selfish, but um, you can't think of it that way. Um, it's something to make you a better person so that you can be a healthier person for whatever relationship that you have. Yeah, you need to just name your limits and be yeah. clear about it and take care of you. And uh, life is too short not to make your own memories and have your own experiences. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's too short. Yeah, it's definitely too short. So we don't yeah. know when if we're going to be here tomorrow. So, you know, I mean, um, so it was interesting to hear that because everyone that responded has, uh, you know, we know them, most of them personally. Um, so has struggled with the same. Same thing. Yes. Um, and, you know, the guilt, the feelings of guilt when you say no to something because you truly just want to help <laughs> and yes. stuff. But, you know, you can't always do it all and you do have to take time. Yeah. And, that's the- and my weekend time is very important to me because when I leave work and I go back to work on Monday, I walk in, I was like, geez, didn't I just leave here last night? I mean, seriously, am I back this soon? Uh, and, uh, you know, you walk in the door and automatically if the patients know your name, they're like, Sure, sure. I'm like, I, I'm like, I have my lunch bag. I have my purse. I have two <laughs> cups. I have my big water cup. I have my chai tea cup. I'm like, does it look like I'm working? <laughs> so I'm yeah, just trying exactly. to get to my square. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. it starts or I walk in and they put stuff on my desk and I sit down and I'm trying to get my stuff away. And, you know, they come in they're like, okay, so this person, I'm like, I'm not even, I haven't even got the computer monitors on, I don't have my scanner on, I'm just, my purse is not put away yet, <laughs> like, give me two minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you gotta, you gotta set those boundaries. I notice yeah. too, if I don't start setting boundaries, or I get frustrated, and I feel like I'm being pushed, or someone's trying to convince me to do something I don't want to do, I start getting snarky. <laughs> yeah, well, because it's, because it's like they're pushing you because they don't understand when to stop. Yeah. You know, you've already expressed your boundaries to them, but it's like they just have no respect for your boundaries. No. Right. So that's why you get snarky with them. So, and I, <laughs> you know, you, I can't blame you because you're trying to tell them in a nice way, but they're just like, I don't really care right now. I'm not listening. This is what I want done. And if you can't get it done, then you're no good anymore. Yeah. You can't know. do me this favor, then, yeah. you know, you know, and when I was thinking about this today and about boundaries and I was running to get dog food, I remember this one lady I worked with at a grocery store and she was like an assistant manager at the front end or something. And we became friends and she was going through this horrible divorce and she kept talking about her husband and how horrible he was. And, and then she would like, she had me running like to grab her kids at the bus stop and different things, like completely using me. And she was talking about how verbally abusive her husband was and stuff. And to mm-hmm. me, that was the connection. I could relate to the verbal and the physical abuse. And so I was like, oh, I got to get her kids. They can't go through, they, you know, they, they don't need to go to the house and be with him. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know what that's like. And I, she totally was playing people. It wasn't just me. There was one other girl too. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I look back at that now, I, I think she, she, she was, she was the the problem, you know, I don't think the husband was the problem. I don't think, you know, I, because I never saw the husband and the kids seemed like me when I was going through my stuff with my parents, I was stressed and had moments of, I was feeling panicked. Sure. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen next. I didn't know what was, you know, and things Mm -hmm. like walking on eggshells. Yeah. Yeah. Walking on eggshells and her kids, you know, it, it didn't seem to affect them like that. So when I look back at things, and then I never saw her again. I was like, you know, I think she's just kind of really using because, you know, I was 19 then, 18, 19. So sure. Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, see, our experiences set forth to the, the type of boundaries that we we are to set for ourselves, for others. Um. So, you know, Um. I don't know. 
every day is a, is a different day. Every day you meet new people. Every day it's like something. Like for me at work, I have to set boundaries with customers sometimes. You know, like like you said, like if I say no, I'm sorry, I can't do that for you. That doesn't mean I have five thousand explanations as to why. However, they do require a why. You know, it's because I can't. That's it. No, I can't. Done. I'm finished. Right. I'm not talking anymore. It's just funny to me because you see the person's true colors when you don't give them what they want. Yes, you do. You sure do. Definitely. Because you know why they're so used to you saying yes, yes, yes all the time that when you do say that no that one time, that's it. You're just a no good person anymore. Yeah. Not useful yeah, and that's not them. that's not how it works. In other words, mm-hmm. they were like I had a friend of mine, right? She, her and I worked together, and but we were really close, and we were very, we like did everything. You know, I I threw her birthday parties. She did the same for me. We would go out together. We would do it's like you know like you have a sister or something. Like you're just hanging around them all the time. Well, she would, I would invite her to my daughter's birthday parties and she would never show up. I never said anything to her, although it bothered me, you know, like, why wouldn't you show up? Like, I always showed up for your daughter's stuff. Yeah. So then the one time she invited me to the birthday party and I didn't go because I got sick and tired of it. Like, I'm not going to show up at yours if you don't show up, you know, at mine. Yeah. So. She got so mad at me. She got really mad at me. And I told her, no, I wasn't coming. No, like, that's it. Why are you getting mad? And I could hear her in the background talking about me. Like, okay, if you're talking about me in the background, why don't you just come and tell me to my face? Yeah. You know, but, you know, it's that that kind of a relationship. Like, I said no to her one time, and it's like, oh, now she just has to talk behind my back about everything. And that's the same thing with a with another lady. She was um she was an immigrant from from Syria. She had come here. They don't really know any English and they had a lot of kids or what have you. And so I, you know, being brand new to America, I I felt the need, you know, to to help them out a little bit. And they had a daughter who was disabled and so on. And and so they needed to go down to get some some aid and stuff like that for her as far as medical stuff is concerned. So, you know, I was helping them out doing that and everything. And the moment that I said no, it's like, well, why can't you? I said, because I'm working. I can't just get up and leave my job any day that you call me and you say, oh, can you come and pick me up and take me somewhere? Right. You know, who's going to pay for my job? Are you going to pay for it? I pay my bills. Yeah. Are you going to pay my bills? Exactly. No. So I said no. So the next thing I know is now, mind you, I haven't talked to her in years. And the next thing I know, we have a mutual friend who came in and she was telling me basically like she was talking bad about me behind my back. Why? Because I didn't help you? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know myself, so you could talk as much as you want. I don't care. Well, and that's the thing is they show you their true colors. Mm-hmm. And now you really know where you stand in the world of friendship. Yeah, which wasn't a friendship to begin with. No. And it wasn't like I was just assisting them because they were here, you know, coming yeah. from another country. It's hard when you don't know the language, Yeah. you know, anywhere you go in this world. And so, but don't take advantage. Like if I say no to you, there's a reason why I'm saying no. That doesn't mean that I have to tell you what that reason is. Yeah. But it's my reason. Correct. That's it. You're entitled to set those clear limits. And they should respect it. If they respect you, they should respect it. That's right. If they value you, they will respect it. Absolutely. You know. 100%. So. Yeah. I know it's something that I struggle with. And there are times I say no. And I'm on my way to my appointments. And I'm I'm replaying it in my brain when I shouldn't be. I should just turn up the music and just drive. That's it. That's it. Just enjoy yeah. your life. 
you know. That's so. it. You don't have to re- keep replaying them. No. I have to talk to myself too about that. Trust me. It's it's hard, you know, especially when it's, you know, a family member. It's it it's is. hard, you know, and uh it's very difficult. It is. Because yeah. you know, because you so if it's a family member, for example, then you feel like the need yes, you feel like you need to establish those boundaries. But you also feel like you have to think of their feelings as well. Yeah. You know, you have to make sure that they because they are the most important people in your life. Okay. And if you're not comfortable with saying, let's say no, for example, um, then that's okay. And, but it's not okay. You know what I mean? So I don't know if that made sense or not. Probably not, no. but <laughs> no, 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 I get it. And I understand. And no, it's, it's just hard, you know, because yeah. again, you're just, I don't know. You're, well, you want to please the people that are important in you your do, life. You do, but then they don't usually please me. So it's like, I tell myself, why are you doing it? <laughs> right, exactly. Well, that's the thing. And then, then you end up being uncomfortable about it. And it's like, yeah. mm, you know. I know, you know. It's just not easy juggling all the different aspects of any relationship. <laughs> No, it's not. And we do have lots of different relationships. And we you know? do. I know I do. So, yeah, you know, I, it's just not easy juggling at all. So it's just something I think about a lot and uh, that I deal with a lot still when I say no and um, the whole guilt thing. So that's why I kind of thought it might be a good topic because it's something I know we all have dealt with and struggled with. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I uh, bet yeah. you. That there are so many people in the same boat as we are, um, you know, trying to figure it out. Um, if you guys have any any additions to what we're saying, please leave them in the comments below. That would be great. Um, we would love to hear them. And uh, it's okay to say no, everyone. <laughs> have some self-care. Yeah, definitely. Self-care is very important. It is. And uh, you realize how much you really like it. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. You know. it's, a, it's slow. When you do it in the beginning, it's slow. And it's okay for it to be slow. But then, like you said, Char, you know, you get used to it after a while. So and it, it becomes a little bit easier. It each does time. become easier. Yeah. Especially when you give in and you're giving in to... Um, I don't know if I want to say that when you're trying to help, it ends up being toxic. Oh, yeah. It, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and it pulls you into drama and stuff that you don't want to participate in. And I wholeheartedly do not participate willingly in anyone's drama. And oh. when I end up in drama and it's, I'm being drugged into it, and there have been occasions where I've been drugged into it by grown women um, and then I stop being friends with them and they don't understand why it's like, cause I'm not playing this game, right? I'm not doing your drama. So that's kind of when I started setting my limits a few years ago. Um, so, and now it's, I've moved the line up to include family members at certain times and stuff. I'm not going to cancel my plans I've had for a year. I'm not, you know, cause you know, my point. No, and you shouldn't have to. And I shouldn't have to, you know, and I shouldn't be made feel guilty for going. Exactly. So, yeah, you just run into things in your life and situations and you're just like, is it just me? Because I know many times I thought I must be losing my mind. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's not just you. It's it's me too. You know. And, And others, I'm sure. No, I'm sure. I'm sure. I think it's the. I think yeah. it's pretty common. I think everyone struggles with it at some point in their life. It does, even the strong ones, even the strong ones that overpower the other ones. <laughs> True. I think they struggle with that too as well. So it, it kind of plays on both ends. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, what a great topic. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. That was an awesome topic, I think. You as well. Thank you for sharing. That's what I mean. <laughs> It's it's 1 a.m. I had a I had a muscle relaxer, so I'm relaxed. 
I love it. I'm yeah. glad you're relaxed. Well, you, need you know, to be. I'm a lightweight, so <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes you need to be relaxed, <laughs> only to find out it's not going to help my tendonitis. <laughs> no, uh, it's right, okay. It, it helps your up. your brain. It does help my brain. <laughs> What brain? <laughs> yeah, what brain now? Pretty now sure you're so relaxed, you don't have a brain. <laughs> pretty sure I've seen some things that aren't really there. So, <laughs> oh, well, that'll do it to you someday. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you, we better wrap it up, and you better get some rest. Yes, my dear, you yeah. as well. You okay, as well, well, thanks, guys, for listening to us. Um, uh, we hope that you like each and every episode. Um, please leave us some. Um, comments below let us know uh, if there are any other topics that you guys would like to discuss and um like we, us on facebook and uh instagram follow us please there you go there you go All right sounds good yes well, i guess we're over and out we're gonna be over now in a second <laughs> all right sounds good <laughs> Okay, my dear, you have a wonderful rest of your night. You too. You do the same. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night.